And uh, I just stand amazed that God can do what He wants to do when He wants to do it. Amen? Just, uh, you know, it, it's the simple little things in life that really, it, at least for me, make me really stop and, and think about the goodness of God, the mindfulness of God. Now, we was, have been on this fire down there for the last seven or eight days. I don't remember exactly how long we were down there, six or seven, eight, I don't know. But the first time we were down there, we could never find a place to park that we didn't have to walk a half a mile to get to the chow line, which is important to me <laughs> and to Mike. And, and Mike's got a uh, boogered up leg, and he's, it has a hard time walking around, and the ground's real uneven, and if he stubs his toe, it's like killer. And the Lord, you can say it's chance, I don't care what you call it, I'm calling it an act of God. I'm calling it the blessings of the Lord. But when you pull into camp, there's a bunch of uh, barriers there, and there's special parking here, and no parking there and no parking over here and and there was this one spot that was between these barriers there was no ribbon there no no parking signs no nothing and my pickup just would fit right in there perfect and so i just pulled in there and parked we got out went and had dinner came back got in the pickup yeah any closer and we'd be listening to the music in the, in the chow line and so that was great, and I said, Lord, thanks for that. That was awesome. The next night we come in, or that next morning we come in for breakfast. Nobody's parked in that place. We pull right in there, park. Well, thank you, Lord. We leave, we go to work, we work all day, we come back that night, we go to dinner, nobody's in that place, bam, pull right in there, park. All week, without fail, not one time did we park anywhere else but in that spot. And people saw us there, they, they, they're like, all around. God kept that, I believe God kept that open just for us. You can think whatever you want, I don't care, Mike. I'm telling you, man, it was awesome. It was awesome. I believe it was God. God is mindful of the little things in our life if we'll just let Him in on it. Amen. I, 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 I'm not in our regular Bible study notes tonight. Um, um, when, when Bob was speaking this morning, um, out of Isaiah, uh, my, I, I read things that are on that passage, on, that, on those pages, and, and see the context and those kinds of things. And this morning when Bob was ministering, uh, I, I caught this passage in Isaiah caught my eye, and it's a familiar passage, but the Lord really prompted me to, to share from this passage tonight in, in lieu of our regular service, service notes and, and the, the series that we've been in. But, but uh, I, I just feel like God wants me to share on this tonight, and so I'm going to. And so turn with me to the book of Isaiah chapter 55. Isaiah chapter 55. Amen? Starting in verse 6. I want to read verses 6, 7, 8, and 9. This is what it says, Seek the Lord while He may be found. Call upon Him while He is, ne is near. Let the wicked forsake His way and the unrighteous man His thoughts. Let Him return to the Lord and He will have mercy on Him. And to our God, for He will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Father, I, I just submit this remaining time to you tonight, and I pray, God, that you'd speak through me to your people, Lord, in this passage of Scripture, God, that we would come to the place where we realize no matter how big the problem is, no matter how small the problem is, no matter what it looks like, no matter what the world might have to say, your thoughts are not our thoughts, and our thoughts are not your thoughts. Your thoughts are so much farther and so much bigger and so much so far beyond anything we could ever think. 
And so, God, I pray tonight that you take these simple words, help us to take them from this place and apply them to our life, and be blessed by it in Jesus' name. Amen. So it's, it's clear, in my opinion, it's clear in this passage that God is reminding us that His ways and His thoughts are literally unfathomable, unfathomable, blah, 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 that word, unfathomably, is that the way you say that? Unfa- I wrote it, but I can't say it. Unfathomably beyond our thoughts. They're beyond us. And frankly, it is good, I believe, for you and I to remember that when we are, remember that when we are interceding, whether it be for the lost or for a seemingly impossible situation. Maybe you're interceding, maybe you're seeking God for God, what would you have me to do? I raised my hand this morning, but, but God, what do you, I don't know what you want me to do. What do you want me to do? And when He begins to speak to your heart, don't let don't let your flesh well up and say, no, that's not God, that's too big. You're too old for that. You're too young for that. You, you're not well trained enough for that. Listen, if you'll but trust God, He'll do whatever needs to be done for you to succeed in your ministry. I believe it with all my heart. Isaiah tells us to call on the Lord while He's near. Call on the Lord while He's near. Let me assure you, it took me a long time to figure this out, but I want to I want to I want to help you with it tonight. God is not planning on moving away from you. God has no plans on moving away from you or from me, but often we move far away from him or we erect barriers between us and God. And we wonder why is God so distant? Listen, he never left, you did. He didn't move out, you did. He didn't build a barricade. He didn't say, I don't want to be in your, in, in your space anymore. He wants to be in our space. Don't wait, church, until you have drifted far away from God to begin to seek Him. Don't wait till you're in that position. Turning to Him may be far more difficult later in life. People that live a good life all their life, have a hard time accepting Jesus because they've lived a good life. I, I, I've lived well. I paid my taxes. I worked hard. I supported my family. I, I did this and I did that. I'm a good person. A lot of good people, I hate to say this, but church, good people are going to go to hell. Because you can be good and not know Jesus. You can be good, you can be great, you can be, you can be a giver and not know Jesus. We've got to have the Lord. The reality is God may come and judge the earth before you decide, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to accept the Lord. I'm going to check into accepting the Lord. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to begin to serve the Lord you know, later on in life. I'm going to begin to serve the Lord tomorrow. Well, there's a problem with that, church, in that you ain't guaranteed tomorrow. You don't know that you're going to make it through tonight. Seek Him now, the Bible says, while we can, before it's too late. The people of Israel were foolish to act as if they knew what God was thinking and what He was planning and His knowledge and His wisdom are far greater than any of yours or mine. And you and I are foolish, listen to me, to try and fit God into our mold. And we do it all the time. God, I'm gonna, I'll serve you and I'll do all this as long as you can fit in this little box. As long as I can be comfortable in, in who you are and what I perceive you to be. Listen, God ain't getting in your box. He's not going to get in your box. And even if you could put him in your box, he's too big to stay in your box. His knowledge and his wisdom are far greater than yours and mine. We need to make his plans and purposes conform to... to uh, 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 let me get this right. We're foolish to try and fit God into our mold and to make his plans and purposes conform to ours. 
Instead, we must strive to fit into his plans. God, how can you use me? Listen, church, he will, he'll use you if you'll make yourself available. He'll use you. It's interesting why when we were uh, the first morning back in fire camp and one of the other operators that, was, uh, that we were acquainted with uh, needed a ride to his machine, and so we began driving down the road, and I was driving, and Mike was riding in the front seat and this other operator was in the back seat and we were talking about this and that and the other thing and he began to ask questions and and uh, and it came out that that i'm a pastor and and that mike's uh, you know part of our leadership and and has been helping me and in, in ministry blah, blah the whole thing all of a sudden this guy i mean it's f-bomb here and the f-bomb there i mean it was and all of a sudden it did that quick all of a sudden He's quoting Bible. He's talking about the church. And, and the guy's apparently been in church because he knew what he was talking about. But he spent so much time rubbing shoulders with the world that the world is starting to rub off on him. But when God's people got around him, instantly he knew he needed to make some changes in his life. It was an, it was an amazing thing. And we didn't come down on him. We didn't get on his case or any of that. But just simply because of, of being in, in, in the proximity of somebody who at least professed to be a Christian and did our best to respond and to act and to talk like men of God would act and respond and talk. We didn't talk like they talked, and, but we didn't condemn them for the way they talked. We reached out to them and loved on them anyway. And, and our prayer is that that we impacted those lives so that, that one day we'll see them in heaven. God's not going to fit in our mold. What is involved in seeking the Lord? What is it that is involved in seeking the Lord? Well, for one thing, it means admitting that we're sinners and that we have offended the, the holy God. The first thing to... Uh, overcoming an addiction is admitting that you have an addiction. Amen? I mean, they go. I've never been to one, but I've heard all the stories about them. You go to AA and you sit in a circle or whatever. Hi, my name's Shane and I'm an addict or I'm a drunk or I'm this or whatever. Maybe we need to have a Christian one. Hi, my name's Shane and I'm born again believer filled with the Holy Ghost of God and I'm looking for somebody to get saved. Hey, hey. Amen? What does it mean? It means admitting that I'm a... Listen, that's why I talk about my sin a lot. Not because I'm honoring my sin or glorifying my sin, but I know where God brought me out of. I know what God has done in my life to get me to where I am today. And it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy. Seeking the Lord means that we repent, and, and it means repenting, and, and it means changing your mind about sin. We got a church, we got to change our mind about sin. We got to turn away from sin and turn to the Lord. We have to turn to God in faith, and we have to believe. Here's where the church gets in, in trouble. We've got to begin to believe the promises of God. We got all excited about what God did in this place this morning. You know what? He wants to do that every time we're together. He wants to do so much more than that. Turn away from sin. Turn to the Lord. We must turn to God in faith and believe His promises that in His mercy we, He will abundantly, abundantly... Listen, if anybody knows about abundant pardon, it's me. I'm telling you, as your pastor, God has abundantly pardoned me. I, I received today, this very day, today, what is today? The third? The third of September, today, between the morning service and tonight's service, I received one of the greatest blessings. Not my, it's not one of the greatest blessings, but it's a great blessing to me. That I never even saw coming. And I don't deserve it. I'm not going to tell you what it is right now. 
I'll tell you what it is later. Because it's a blessing. And when we least expect it, God wants to bless His people, church. Listen, I'm not going to stand up here and lie to you about a blessing if I didn't get a blessing. Let me just clear the air. Believe, trust me when I say I got blessed. But I'm not letting the cat out of the bag just yet. Church, re repentance and faith go together. Repentance and faith go together. Repentance toward God and faith towards our Lord Jesus Christ. And so the phrase, while we, He may be found, it suggests that if we don't take His invitation seriously, the invitation may cease while we're delaying. Think about the Scripture. Remember the wedding supper? He said, go out and compel them. I, gee, I, I'd, like to, I'd like to come to the dinner, but you know what? I just bought these oxen. I've got to try them out. I've got to see if they're any good. Well, what about you? Well, I just got married, and, and you know, I'm going to be with my... No. I said, I'm not going to be able to make it. Well, I've I got family from out of town. I, I'm not going to be able to make it. What about the five, uh, the, the ten virgins virgin that go into the wedding? Five of them were wise, five of them were foolish. They weren't prepared. Five of them were, five of them weren't. What happened? The door shut. They pounded on the door. Let us in, let us in. Sorry, the door's shut. When the door shuts, I, I can imagine they were throwing rocks at Noah on the boat. Trying to get his attention to open the door. Noah couldn't open that door if he wanted to. God shut that door and sealed that sucker. When the door closes, it's over. When the sky splits open and Jesus steps out on a cloud, it's over. When the trumpet of the Lord blasts and the dead in Christ rise and those of us that remain are caught up to meet them in the air, listen, it's over. Your chance has passed. Don't delay. We've got to take His invitation seriously. In the parable of the Great Supper, God closed the door on those people that spurned His invitation. 2 Corinthians 6 and 2 says, Behold, now is the accepted time. When? Now, not tomorrow, not next week sometime, right now. Why would we wait? Why would anybody want to wait? I want to share with you, I'm already out of time, but I, just bear with me for a minute, will you? I want to share uh, some important facts for you and I to remember when we're dealing with things that we might deem too big to handle. Maybe you see somebody that is... Too much of a sinner for God to save. You ever seen those people? I've seen them people. There's no way God can touch that person. There's no way. And then I look in the mirror and I go, hmm. well, there's that. Number one, light, light is more powerful than darkness. Light is more powerful than darkness. Bob illustrated it very well this morning when he talked about going in that room, putting the towel under the door so no light could come in there. But yet, when you light one single match, everybody in the place is illuminated. I remember in high school, I thought it'd be fun to take a photo class. It sounded like an easy grade to me. What they didn't tell you was that you had to develop the film. And what that involves, if you've never done that, is getting in a, in a closet that is completely blocked out of any light. Because there can't be any light in there. Because if it will expose the film and it will ruin your pictures. So it's dark. You can't see your hand literally in front of your face. But yet, you've got to put this film on this little real thing and spool it on. I mean, it's dark. 
It's called a dark room. Hello. Here's your sign. You have a sign, but you can't see it because it's dark. But any amount of light, in fact, in fact, the greater the darkness, the easier to see the light. Amen? Light is always more powerful than darkness. Number two, truth is stronger than error. Truth is always stronger than error. Remember, the Bible says that it is the truth that will set you free. Truth is what can break the chains. Truth will break the yokes of bondage. It's truth that is stronger than error. Number three, there's more grace in the heart of God than sin in the heart of man. When you look at somebody that you deem a sinner, and we've probably all done it, there's no way God can, get, can, can reach that guy. He's just up to his eyebrows in sin. There's just no way. The, 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 the heart, there's more grace in the heart of God than there is in, 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 in the heart of man's sin. I promise you. Look at, uh, with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 9. Verses 12 through 15, it says, For the administration of this service not only supplies the needs of the saints, but also abounding through many thanksgivings to God, while, uh, while, through, the proof of this, while through the proof of this ministry they glorify God for the obedience of your confession to the gospel of Christ and for your liberal sharing with them and all men, and by their prayer for you, how long for you because of the exceeding grace of God in you? Thanks be to God for His indescribable gift. Now, it's talking about offerings and it's talking about money and those kinds of things. But I'm telling you, it talks about here the, the prayers and the, and the exceeding grace of God. God has grace enough to get you and I through to the other side. God has that much grace. Thanks be to God for His incredible, indescribable gift. Number four. There's way more power in the Holy Spirit of God to convince men of, of sin than there is power of satanic forces to tempt men to sin. Do you realize that the Bible says that with every temptation, God has made a way of escape? With every temptation, God has made a way for you and I to escape. Romans 8, 1 through 5. There is therefore. There is therefore. Now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh on account of sin. He condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. What camp are you going to decide to be in? That's the question. Are you going to walk in the flesh or are we going to walk in the Spirit? The interesting thing is, you and I get to choose. It's your choice. He's not going to slap you upside the head and, and, and make you do this or that. You have a free will. You can choose. Number five. There's more power. I like this. This is why I got this is the last one. There is more power in one drop of the shed blood of Jesus to cleanse men's hearts from the stain of sin than there is in the accumulated filth of men's sin since Adam and Eve. 
Think about that. When, when you think God can't forgive you, think about that statement. Romans 8 and 26 says, Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weakness, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit Himself makes intercession for us with groanings that can't be uttered. As a believer, we are not left to our own resources to cope with our problems. We can cry out to God. Hebrews 4.16, Therefore come boldly into the throne room of, of God and find grace and help and mercy in your time of need. Even when you don't know the right words to pray, the Holy Spirit inside of you will begin to well up and utter, utter words. That's why we need the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We need to be filled with God's Holy Spirit so that He can speak and pray through us. And when God begins to help you and I pray, we don't need to be afraid to come before Him. We don't need to be afraid. Ask the Holy Spirit to intercede for you in harmony with God's own will. Holy Spirit, I, Lord, I need you. Every hour, I need you. Amen? And then... When you bring your request to God, we need to trust that He will do what is best. He may not answer your prayer the way you think your prayer ought to be answered. But He'll answer your prayer with His best intentions in, at heart. Amen? Come on, Kathy. God is a, such a great God. He loves us so much. He desires to do so much through this congregation. I, I just absolutely believe it. And so in the remaining few moments that we have together tonight, I just want to invite you to bow your heads right where you are or come to these altars. Begin to just cry out to God. Begin to just ask Him, Lord, what is it that You'd have me to do? Think beyond yourself. Think beyond your power. Allow God to do something great in your life that it might impact others. For his glory and for his honor. Amen? Let's pray. When you're done praying, consider yourself dismissed. God bless you. God go with you. Thank you, Lord.